All right, then the last law that we're going to discuss in this section is the law of syllogism. All right, so it's another law of deductive reasoning where, where remember, deductive reasoning is using facts, properties, or definitions. All right, the law of syllogism allows you to state a conclusion from two true conditional statements. So you need to have two true conditional statements. All right, and then the important thing is that the conclusion of one statement has to be the hypothesis of the other. All right, so the conclusion of one has to be the hypothesis of the other. So here, we have if P, then Q, and if that's true. And then our next statement is if Q, then R, and that's also true. Then we can automatically jump to the conclusion that if P, then R. All right, because we know that if P happens, then Q will occur. And then once Q occurs, R will happen next. So we can go ahead and say, well, once P occurs, R is going to be true as well, and R is going to follow. So an example is if it's July, then you're on summer vacation. If you're on summer vacation, then you work at a smoothie shop. So here are our two conditionals. All right. Our first one is if it is July, then you're on summer vacation. The next one is if you're on summer vacation, then you work at a smoothie shop. We can conclude then that if it is July, then you work at a smoothie shop because we have our hypothesis of our first conditional and then the conclusion of our second and then the conclusion of the second becomes the hypothesis of the next and then our conclusion is you work at a smoothie shop so once it's July you're going to be on summer vacation and once you're on summer vacation you're going to be working at a smoothie shop all right so we can conclude then if it's July then you work at a smoothie shop all right so we're going to do one example with this all right, so then an example that we have, you're asked, what can you conclude from the given information? All right, so you're given, if a figure is a square, then the figure is a rectangle. And then if a figure is a rectangle, then the figure has four sides. All right, so the first thing I'm going to suggest that you do is you first write down your first conditional, if P, then Q. All right, and then we write down both our hypothesis and our conclusion. So our hypothesis for the first statement is a figure is a square. So a figure is a square and then we write down our conclusion for the next one then the conclusion is what follows the word then so it's the figure is a rectangle all right so once we identify our hypothesis and our conclusion of the first statement then we look at the next statement so it starts out and what it must do is the conclusion of the first one or the conclusion of one statement has to be the hypothesis of the other, which is what it is here. So since it's the same statement, we will say if Q then R, and then our Q is the figure is a rectangle, and then our R or our conclusion for this one is the figure has four sides. All right, so you're asked, what can you conclude? So our hypothesis of the first statement was a figure is a square, and then our conclusion was a figure is a rectangle. And then the, the hypothesis of the next statement was the figure is a rectangle. So you see here how the first or one conclusion of the other is the hypothesis of the next statement. It doesn't necessarily have to be that your conclusion of the first statement has to be the hypothesis of the second. They can be switched where the conclusion of your second statement is the hypothesis of your first and you can just reorder them. Um, so it's not necessarily going to be in this order every time. But what has to occur is that the conclusion of one has to be the hypothesis of the other. So then what we can state then is if P then R. So we can say if a figure is a square comma then the figure has four sides All right so that is the the conclusion that we can come from because our hypothesis in one or I'm sorry our conclusion in one was the hypothesis in another all right, and then uh, one more thing that we're going to cover in this section is where we're going to do a problem that uses both the law of detachment and the law of syllogism.